On this callout, I am here to repair a fridge freezer. This is a capital tube that was fitted by the guy before me. And this is the pipe, the quarter inch pipe that goes to the compressor. And this pipe was mounted to the coil plate and the capital tube was also fitted to the other tube. So I removed this coil plate because it's leaking. Yet there are many leaks that they have tried to close with the tube wand. Like this is the first one here, the second one. Um, there is also a third one there. Um, there are also other leaks outside it. The fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one, the seventh one. This white thing that you see, it's where the probe or the capillary tube of the thermostat was going for it to detect the temperature of the plate. This is where they have joined the plate with the rivets after they have folded it. This plate came flat or straight like this one that you see, which is going to be the replacement of the one that is leaking. So I am also going to fold it like they have done and fit it back to the fridge though mine is not the same length but it's gonna do the job at the back i see this thermostat i think the guy that came before me was replacing the thermostat that is inside with this one but now this one is not wired that's what is confusing me but let's worry about that later here is the information of the fridge here we are told that this fridge was using R12 and the grams that we're supposed to put when we're charging the system. Because the compressor is also damaged, we're going to replace the compressor with an R134A compressor and charge this fridge with R134A. Here, that's where we will open for us to be able to remove the back cover. So what I will do, I will pause remove the back cover and then come back later now here is the back of the fridge what you see is the capital tube that you saw on the inside while we were starting the assessment and the quarter inch pipe that was also joining to the coil plate that we removed so what i'm gonna do is when i'm putting my new coil plate I think I will use this capillary tube because it's not blocked and it's long enough. I will have to replace the filter. I will see if the joint I will keep it or leave it because it's not a big deal. I also join capillary tubes when I want to. So I'll just take this pipe out and check it for leaks. Normally where there is rust that's where I always suspect I always suspect leaks. So if there is no rust on this pipe, then there is no reason for me to suspect the leak. Since this is copper, it's not aluminium. I trust copper. This capillary tube and the quarter inch pipe, they are going to this coil plate, one pipe of the coil plate will take the quarter inch pipe and one pipe of the coil plate or the other pipe will take the capillary tube so i will use either this one for a capillary tube or the other one once that is done i will take the sponge um put it back nicely after that i will then take the back cover and also put it back what I did, I just paused and mounted the cold plate. Now the cold plate has been mounted through this screw to the top. I also drilled a hole to the side. So I'm going to mount it to the body as I have done here. This one is mounted also at the back. So it's not tilting. I'm going to put a screw there. To avoid it to tilt since it's not mounted at the back like on the other side um, this probe I might have to drill two holes and put back that plastic for it 
to mount the probe so that the probe will be able to detect the temperature of the plate. This hole that you see at the back, what I will do, I will use a seal and seal there. Now I have already fitted the screw that I promised to fit so that my plate won't tilt. Uh, so this one and the one at the back, it's making this stand still and don't uh, move up and down even when I'm pushing it. Now it's balanced. What I'm going to do, I will unscrew this screw and pull the cold plate toward me and take this probe and push it between the body of the fridge and the cold plate. This is because I've changed my mind. So after that, I will then come to this screw and screw it in so that it will pinch the thermostat probe between the cold plate and the body of the fridge. So I've changed my mind. I'm not gonna do what I said I will do with the thermostat. As I've said, the compressor is damaged. So now what's left for me is to remove this compressor and put this new compressor. I have already braced the, the service valve then the suction side or the heat exchanger pipe or the return pipe, whatever you call it. The only thing that's left there now is the condenser. Before I put back the condenser, I must take this compressor out. So I need a spanner to open the screws that are mounting the base of the compressor to the fridge. Um, I need a spanner that will fit there. I think a cube spanner will work better there. But I don't see my cube spanner to my spanners. Um, you know, when you are always working with these things, sometimes you misplace them. I think this one will work better. This is it. It was in the wrong place. So let's see if it's working. Well, this cube spanner, it's not working. It, it is small. So I think I need a cube spanner that is bigger than this one. Um, let's try this one. Oops. This one now is too big. So I don't have the size for it because the other one is smaller and the big one is bigger so the spinner that is between these two I my friend took it so I don't know what size is that one let me try this one it's not 14 so I think it's between 12 and 13 so I need um number 18 and number 12 i'm not sure i'm not good with spanner sizes i'm not a person who sees the nut and know exactly what the spanner and nut is but i am that person who sees the fridge and know exactly what the compressor of the fridge will be it seemed as if my spinners are also missing so i did manage to get 12 and 13 so let's see which one is working yes number 12 is is working so that's number 12. um what i will do i will pause the video and take out this compressor and then fit the new compressor here we go now the new compressor has been installed um, the old compressor has been taken out so the new compressor that i'm fitting on this system is using r134a as i have mentioned it's a sigelan brand the refrigerant can be seen on the information on the compressor so these are the 
components for the compressor, the capacitor. It's a non-polarized capacitor. Um, it doesn't matter how you fit these wires to the relay as long as you fitting all of them or both of those wires to your left. And the neutral wire will then go to the right and live will go to the overload protector. But you must remember that the life that I'm talking about comes from the thermostat. So don't just take life from the plug and then put it to the overload protector. I need to figure which wire is from the thermostat on these wires that is coming from the thermostat so that I can fit it to the overload protector. I also need to check um, neutral wire so that I can fit neutral to the relay. I can see that there are wires that are going underneath and there are wires that are going up. I think these ones that are going up to the white plate that you see, they are going to the thermostat. And the one that is going underneath, I think it's going to the door switch. I had a small problem with the thermostat of this fridge. So the old one needs a replacement. So I'm going to replace it with this one. This is the one that we saw at the back of this fridge installed to the condenser but not wired so i'm gonna use it as the replacement of the old one this old thermostat was fitting different it was not fitting the way i have fitted um the one that i'm gonna use as the replacement um it was fitted like this as i am showing you and the pin would be to the front that's where the capital tube of this thermostat was and they made a mistake and cut it. So um, I'm not going to use the old one. So when I was trying to fit it the way the old one was fitted, the pins and the lugs were not going to get through at all. There was, there was no space for them. So I had to drill where you see now and mount this thermostat the way I've mounted it so and I used the nut to hold it tight and that dot you see it's the one that it's gonna be a guide of the temperature set so I'm just gonna show you now I will put this wheel and now according to my point we are at number one um, then we are at zero then as we go we are increasing the cold we are at number seven now if we wind it back until it's zero it's gonna be off another problem here is that this thermostat is a three pin that means it's not for a freezer it's for a fridge the old thermostat that was used here was for a freezer so it was detecting the temperature of the freezer so if i take this thermostat and fit it the way i said i'm gonna fit the old one i'm gonna ha we will have a problem because it's gonna switch this cold plate very early before the stuff freeze so i must come with another plan in the meantime i need to figure life that is coming from the outside and the wire that is going outside by outside i mean the wire that is going to the compressor so this is the switch that i was talking about when i said there are wires that are going underneath the fridge they are coming to this door switch if the switch is still working we will use it so um now i have mounted the thermostat to the to the body of the fridge as you can see that's the plan i've made so 
definitely my plan will work uh, i would like to know if you were on my shoes what were you gonna do you can see now they will they will definitely know how to control this thermostat they won't even need me to tell them or explain how it works to them because they see the dot that i have made there and they will know that wires must correspond to that dot that bulb is is not working so using a tape is not a big problem because it's not like it's gonna get hot and melt the tape now the probe for my thermostat as you can see um is just there it's not um pinched between the body and the coil plate so it's gonna take quite a uh, a lot of time for it to detect the temperature and that's good because we want to detect the fridge temperature so now um everything is almost in place on the inside you can see the hole where the old thermostat was coming i have closed with the tape and you can still use this door to open and close um the inside the cold plate so whatever is on the top of the cold plate will freeze but whatever is underneath the cold plate will get cold so this is the fridge freezer old model fridge freezer let's go to the back now as you can see the pencil dryer has been braced the condenser has been braced to the compressor and i have a hose already to my suction side so i'm not worried about this sheet that is not closing because i know i did something that I was not supposed to do so i left that pipe there like that so it's the one that it's not allowing me to close the proper but that's not gonna affect the operation of the fridge now what's left for me to do is to vacuum the system now let us start vacuuming the system for us to start vacuuming the system we need to start the vacuum pump so i have started the vacuum pump I don't know whether if you are able to see there are fumes coming out of the vacuum pump meaning that the vacuum pump is cleaning the system you will not hear the noise of the vacuum pump on this video because i've muted it i've muted that and edited the video um, after vacuuming we will wait for 15 minutes if after 15 minutes the needle has went back to zero we know that there is no leak then we regas the system another thing that caught my attention on this call out is this washing machine i really like this washing machine and i do hope that one day they will call me to come and repair it for them or they sell it to me so that i can repair it and sell it because i i will not keep this brand i have my own washing machine that i'm happy with it's for domestic use this one it's more like commercial or industrial what i noticed is that um the vacuum pump is not reaching minus 30 and when i close it it's going back to zero so that means there is a leak and that leak must be figured and repaired before regressing you see it's been long now but still there are some fumes coming out of the vacuum pump even after such a long time i think i've been waited i think i've waited for more than 20 minutes and when i close the gauge and as you can see there it's going back to zero so 
what I did, I removed the back cover and traced the leak because um, after putting gas to the system, because that's how we see a leak. When the vacuum pump tells us that there is a leak, we put gas, gas to the system and observe where the gas is coming out. So I did figure that the gas is coming out here. I don't know whether you can see this hole. There is a hole there. This happened when I was putting back the back cover and the sponge. So that means I was not soft with this pipe. I was rough. Then the pipe cracked there. So I will use the one that I just showed you to replace the pipe that is damaged. So that has been done now and the back cover has been fitted back. I have vacuumed the system as you can see it's on minus 30. I have already waited my 15 minutes and my 15 minutes has passed now and we are not approaching zero we are still at minus state if you remember clearly this is an r13 this is an r13a compressor that means i must charge it with r134a gas or refrigerant so that's what i'm gonna do now i'm i'm just gonna charge the system and observe whatever that I need to observe to the gauge and also to the condenser and to the cold plate inside. So I hope you still remember before we regress, we need to patch the yellow holes with the refrigerant to take out the atmospheric gases that went through the yellow holes when we were removing the yellow holes from the vacuum pump to the cylinder. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do now. The yellow hose is already fitted to the cylinder. So I'm gonna open the cylinder. After opening the cylinder, I will then open on the weight gauge and put my thumb there to close while opening the the red gauge so that's what i'm doing now i'm purging the yellow hose now i'm opening the red gauge so i am blocking the refrigerant with my thumb so once it's open that move that needle moves that means there is gas there is pressure over my thumb so i release a, a small amount then close again you won't hear the hissing sound because i edited the video so now i am ready to charge the system so what i normally do after patching out the atmospheric gases through the yellow hose um, i close the cylinder after closing the cylinder i like to open the low pressure gauge the, so that the gas that was compressed or condensed to the yellow hose will go through so that is what I have just did so now I am fully opening the low pressure gauge after that I go to the cylinder then I open the cylinder slowly I then find something to do while waiting for the gauge to read 50 or 60. I think by now you know my method of regressing. You should be knowing my method of regressing. So when it's at, when it's at 50 or 60, I will stop and start the the compressor or the fridge. Then I will then observe what's happening after that. Since it takes time for my gauge to read 50 or 60, I had to pause and 
wait until 50 or 60 psi has had been reached so now the fridge is running and it's running at at almost zero as it can be seen on the gauge so i'm still putting little gas as you can see the gauge moving up um, i'm trying to make sure it's running at zero i also want to fill the condenser and take note of how is the condenser getting hot which ring is more hotter than the other is the temperature of the rings equal or the the first one is more hotter and the following is less hotter than the first one and as i go the the temperature decreases and i also want to make sure that the last ring i stop while is is still cold so what i'm doing here i'm still trying to add a little amount of gas so that my system will run at zero not below zero now i'm feeling my rings checking which one is more hotter than the other is the last one getting hot or still cold is the second last getting hot or still cold i also don't want to forget the cold plate i'm also checking if is cold starting to my cold plate as it can be seen this pipe is starting to frost even the cold plate itself is frosting so i know that frost will travel from this side to the other side so i am now happy with what i see on the cold plate i am also happy with what i with what i have seen at the back when i was feeling the heat of the condensers so you can see my thermostat probe that is still there to detect the room temperature and it will switch the compressor on and off depending on our set point normal temperature is four but should the fridge be not colder than the way we want we take it up to five if it's more than what we want we go below so on this case i think i am now done regressing this fridge i must now get paid and hit the road to other callouts don't forget to like comment subscribe and share